Okay, so this game is getting late early, and I think it was really prominent in the first half. I think there was a lot of a lot of things that were a lot more interesting in the first half than that's going on in the second half. Second half, this thing's turning into a blowout. Uh, New Zealand are bringing on the rest of their substitutes to kind of see the game out. So I think the first half was really interesting. Uh, New Zealand were not playing badly by any stretch of the imagination for the first quarter of the game. And Uruguay were just taking the opportunities that they had given to them. Uruguay, uh, they managed to go wide. They were playing with the ball. Their turnovers were great. But... I counted five times in a row, five times in a row, that they just fell over themselves at the critical moment. There was two lineouts that they went for in the corner in succession. And then when those lineouts didn't work and the move didn't work, they then knocked the ball on. They had New Zealand knock the ball on, sorry. And when they were trying to go for a pass on the inside, they just went crazy high. And then from the scrum, they managed to get the ball out quickly for against a scrum that they were getting dominated at. And then every time they tried to hit the 12 on the inside line to get a crash ball and set up the ball outside. And every time they just like fired the ball like a cannon into the guy's chest, even though he's like two meters apart. It was just an example of, I think, a team getting so close to or competing with the best in the world. And, and I think they just got two in their own head about it and they just fluffed it. And oh, it was such a shame because... New Zealand looked like they were about to take their chances. The game was getting a bit like uh, topsy turvy. Lots of exciting things happening. And eventually, like New Zealand score, but then uh, there's a last minute Uruguay tackle that knocks the ball on, so they go back and and then Uruguay had that try over in the corner that was made by an excellent line break by the 14 on the outside, and then the space was on the outside, and uh, and then they but then New Zealand turned the ball over and then they tried to kick and it was charged down and there was a guy in the corner and the six almost goes in the corner they almost took the lead but the reason that the game got away from Uruguay is not because New Zealand just fa- managed to find some form is that they unfortunately they let them back into the game they kept making mistakes with the ball in hand they kept getting too excited and I, I think the game really was over when there was the the ten. With no pressure on him and his own five meter line, he just knocks the ball on from a pass for himself. And New Zealand's scrum is 70 kg heavier than Uruguay's, and it was always going to be a struggle. But it was, yeah, it was such a shame. It was such a shame to see because Uruguay were really, I don't know if they could have played like they did in the first 18 minutes for 80 minutes. But man, they were giving it hell for leather, and the effort was sensational. And it's really put my standing of Uruguay up in the in this in my own kind of head a little bit. Uh, they played great for that first half, but yeah, it's a shame. Uh, as I said, the scrum was a point of complete dominance for New Zealand, and they really kind of used that as a bit of a cheat code to get themselves out of some sticky situations. I think when you're you when you're New Zealand anyway, and you're like one of the best of the world in scrummaging, and then on top of that, you're 70 kg heavier than the opposition. It was never going to be a competition, and that was always going to happen. I want to talk through some of the tries that we saw from New Zealand because some of them were like really sensational. So the try that was uh, that was called back and was actually for a knock on. I think it was actually there's something that was really good to see out of that. It was from a turnover ball, and Rich Mwanga picks the ball up coming at pace. And he instantly recognizes the space on the outside. Instead of just linging it outside, he draws defenders in by taking a golden angle line. And then everyone is just in unison and knows that that's what they had to do. They just have to hold their line and pop it at the last second. And that's what caused the space on the outside. Yes, they knocked it on just at the last minute. But it, it was really cool to see New Zealand just have that unison kind of mind meld where like, right, we're all doing the same thing. No call needed, just instantaneous, just like bang. Um, so that was really cool. There was a very early moment that will get lost and may not even be in the highlights, but uh, Rich Mwanga recognizes the space behind the defensive line, and he must have made a call to have uh, D Mac and Will Jordan chase it because he did a, an up and un, a little chip over, not an up and under, a little chip over the line. And uh, they were just, both Will Jordan and D Mac knew that that was just, they, like, they were, they're not getting a pass. They're not going for an up and under. They knew exactly. There must have been something that they call suddenly that's like a reaction play because they knew exactly just to sprint straight through the line and go for the ball and that set set a line break. So I thought that was really intelligent and cool. I enjoyed that a lot. The two tries off the back of scrums, both quite similar. Seems like they're trying to bring Jordy Barrett in on an inside line. So he's either going to take the ball and bring it back inside or he'll be a dummy on the outside. So that was that was a, a cool to see. I think the commentator said it was like a bit of like a copy pasta situation of what France are doing as well. 
uh, in their game against Italy, but that was a really cool move. And there's more and more that I'm seeing this. Uh, you have the scrum and then you have like the 10 and the 15 behind it. So you can't tell until the last minute which direction they're going. And that's a great way to create an overlap. Uruguay managed to get over to the to the side that they they were doing that, uh, but they overcommitted in getting over there, and that allowed D Mac on one of the tries to slide on the inside, and on one of the other tries, I think it was like a pass over the top. So cool, interesting, uh, well worked moves off of um, off of the lineouts, lineouts, scrums, and yeah, I mean, I just I, the amount of times I've written like uh, Uruguay, it's such a shame they fluffed it again, they fluffed it again. I think I caught, counted like five occasions in a row they fluffed it where they could have possibly gone for points. And I, yeah, I, another thing to mention, I think, is positive notes in terms of individual performances for New Zealand today. I think DMAC was sensational. I would have liked kind of beginning of the second half for maybe DMAC to, for Richie to come off and DMAC to get some good time at 10. The last time I saw DMAC playing 10 for New Zealand, it was against Argentina in the rugby championship. And he, he wasn't playing with a lot of confidence, not the same swagger that he was playing with with the Chiefs back in the Super Rugby. Um, I am watching now, and I think he is kind of playing that 10 role now. Uh, so that's good to get him in there and get some time. Just means you've got more versatility with him. Can play 15, can play 10. Means that if someone goes down injured or, you know, you just want to change your pace, then you can choose any any combination of the Holy Trinity of Barrett, Mwanga, and DMAC, and you have confidence that all of them are going to be fill in that position and play well. But in general, DMAC had a sensational game. He did some great individual play. There was one where he kicks down to the corner. It's going to be a 50 22. Everyone kind of relaxes. And DMAC in the last second just like flips it over to Will Jordan and he goes in under the posts. That was sensational. Uh, and, and it's one of many things that DMAC did today. And it was really good to see him gain some confidence back in that uh, New Zealand All Black shirt because he's been a bit of a forgotten force after his. Uh, so so performances in the rugby championship it's been very much uh, mwanga at 10 and barrett at 15 so great for him to come in and uh and uh and do better so yeah really happy for him and i think one last thing i'm going to say is that uh about the game specifically i've got another thing to say after that but will jordan uh having that pass come from him playing basically like inside center to the outside really tell shows me why i think he kind of puts himself above other top wingers in the world is that he has the classic New Zealand trait of being able to play any position on the field. That pass and the vision to see that that's where the outside space is for the other winger and having it so, like such a big pass for that is really, really good. good. And I, I don't see other wingers being able to do that. For example, like Cheslin Colby, one of the best in the world, but I, can't, I don't see him making like a looping long pass like that, like Will Jordan does, that doesn't hang up in the air too much. It is a bit of a bullet, but it also has the anticipation to know where the wing is going to be to set him up perfectly for a try. And I think that's what sets Will Jordan apart for me in, in, other than his vision and his individual talent in, in, in all regard. And yeah, so that's all the comments for the game. The last thing I'm going to say is that for those of you, including myself, that was watching on the UK commentary, one of the funniest moments, I think, was at the halftime... Half time, all the pundits are down there. You've got uh, Sean Fitzpatrick there, and uh, I think Lawrence Delalio, or some other, you know, some other old English person that I've, I don't know, I don't want to start ripping into them, but you got Sean Fitzpatrick there, and uh, so I think the, like, the host goes, like, Oh, Sean, like Uruguay, they're doing pretty good, you know? They got some good positive stuff, and Sean just kind of just, he couldn't resist. He couldn't resist going, just like, Well, it is 26 0, you know? <laughs> yeah. Is such a classic, like New Zealander. Just like you know, I mean, they are we are smashing them twenty six nil. So let's not get ahead of ourselves. I just I don't know. That's a personal f funny moment for me that I found quite funny. It was just like you guy playing well. They're losing twenty six nil. <laughs> Come on, guys. But yeah, that's it. That's it for me for this game. Uh, good start to the weekend. I think this is a this is a fun game. Enjoyed watching it and some of the tries. I mean, I'm just watching here one here that was just well worked. Um, DMAC playing 10 as I wanted him to, so that's really nice. Literally the exact same move. Instead, they um they put someone else on the inside center on that dummy channel to create the space on the outside, and Will Jordan goes over in the corner. So they've done that move now three or four times. I I, I hope that someone that they play in the quarterfinal will recognize it. So but hey, uh great game. <laughs>